Alright, it's, it's filming. Go. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School lesson. Today is October the 18th, 2020. Welcome members and friends, St. George United Methodist Church community. Today's lesson is in the second unit of our international, international lesson series, Encounter, Fall 2020. The unit's title is Remember Who You Are, and our lesson for today is called Food for Our Souls. Another name for it is a teachable moment, and so it puts the emphasis on the teaching that goes in this lesson and the importance it is to the people of Israel. And we can relate to that because we've all had teachable moments in our lives and are thankful for them. So what we're going to see is in the book of Nehemiah and the 8th chapter verses 1 through 12. We'll read that together. But the purpose, think about the purpose as we do this is to appreciate responsible teaching that helps us form the church into a community of faith. That's what we want every day, every week, every Sunday, every month, every year. Our church to be a community of faith. <clears throat> a little bit of history before we read our scripture. The book of Nehemiah represents a time when Jerusalem is being rebuilt. Jeremiah has been appointed the governor of Jerusalem. Ezra is reading and teaching this moment, and he is a scribe and a priest and a renowned scholar. And he reads the law to the people. <coughs> Excuse me. The Levites are the tribe of priests and they are translating and explaining this law to the people, to the Hebrew people. And then the fourth character in this scripture is the people, the people of Israel. So imagine ourselves in this crowd. Now let's read our scripture, and I'm going to read from the International Lesson Book, but you can read any translation you have. When the seventh month came, <clears throat> and the people of Israel were settled in their towns. All the people gathered together in the area in front of the water gate. They asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the instruction scroll from Moses according to what the Lord had instructed Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the instruction before the assembly. This assembly was made up of both men and women and anyone who could understand what they heard. Facing the area in front of the water gate, he read it aloud from early morning until the middle of the day. He read it in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And everyone listened attentively to the instruction scroll. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for this purpose. And standing beside him were Matthiah, Shema, Ananiah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maaseah on his right hand side, while Pediah, Mishael, Malachijah, Hashem, Haspanada, Zechariah, and Meshullam stood on his left hand side. Standing above all of the people, Ezra the scribe opened the scroll in the sight of all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while raising their hands. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. The Levites, I'll try to say their names correctly, Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jemin, Akub, Shabiathi, Hodiah, Masiah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, and Peleiah 
help the people to understand the instruction while the people remained in their places. They read aloud from the scroll the instruction from God, explaining and interpreting it so the people could understand what they heard. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all of the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Don't mourn or weep. They said this because all the people wept when they heard the words of instruction. Go eat rich food and drink something sweet, he said to them, and send portions of this to any who have nothing ready. This day is holy to our Lord. Don't be sad, because the joy from the Lord is your strength. The Levites also claimed all of the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Don't be sad. Then all the people went to eat and drink, to send portions, and to have a great celebration, because they understood what had been said to them. I know that was a long passage, but you needed to catch the spirit of the characters and what was going on in Nehemiah. Let's look at some key points in the passage. The two books of Ezra and Nehemiah in our Old Testament were considered one book until the third or the fourth century. These two books overlap in their messages to the Hebrew people after the exile and return to their homeland from Babylonia. Both books address the importance of post-exilic Torah instruction. Some of the people no longer knew their culture, they no longer knew their Hebrew language, and they no longer knew or remembered their history. So a new incarnation of Israel was being born here in Jerusalem by the water gate, one of the many gates or entrances into the city of Jerusalem on the city's east side once the walls were rebuilt. Ezra and Nehemiah pick up where the book of Chronicles ends, and it's called the Second Temple Era, Ezra returned from the exile when the Persian sovereign Cyrus authorized the captives to return to their homeland. A decade later, Nehemiah returned. And this is around 445-444 BC. He and Ezra worked together to reestablish Israel as a nation and as God's chosen people. The book of Nehemiah shows Nehemiah's deep dependence on God and his frequent prayers to God. He was successful in wide-range ethical and liturgical reforms in recommitting this nation of Israel to the Lord Yahweh. Let's look, look at the people in this passage. They are many. It says they're all ages, men, women, and children. And they have gathered together to hear this message from Ezra. They have been discouraged, they have been conflicted, and they have been a conquered people. So Ezra and Nehemiah have been asked to bring out the Torah scroll of instruction. Now it's referred to as the instruction scroll, meaning it is the books that we know of Genesis through Deuteronomy. Our lesson book says, the people wanted to hear these stories to enable them to feed their souls and reclaim their call from God. This open, receptive attitude toward instruction led them to greater understanding and joy, and it was a group effort by all. We will discuss their reactions in a minute. On the scene, there's been a podium built, a wooden platform, maybe a, a pulpit, and it's built to hold Ezra and many others. There are 13 other men up there with him as he gives this reading of the instruction scroll. And then the Levites also were there and they continued to ward off the people's grief and the people are weeping and they are guilty. And, and they are, the Levites remind them that joy is God's intention when they hear his word. The people stood for over six hours, they wept, they mourned, and they prayed. In verse 10, they were told, go, eat rich food, and drink something sweet. Good directions. 
and send portions to any who have nothing. Share. This day is holy to the Lord. A powerful direction after hearing that Torah. Celebrate. Let's discuss their reactions. They were hungry for the word of God. The sermon or the reading of the Torah moved them immeasurably. So think about now when you've heard a powerful message. When something moves you, you might have tears. You might have humor. You might have laugh. You might smile. You might say amen. You might celebrate. Do you ever clap? And the preacher might read a particularly moving scripture, a passage, a word to you. You feel like it's spoken to your heart. And think about the reflection of the meanings when this happens. Think about teachable moments in your life and in your faith. This lesson does address the importance of good teaching. And there are two biblical passages I wanted to share with you that were mentioned. In Proverbs, in chapter 5, the speaker is lamenting. And he says, Oh, why didn't I do what they told me? Why did I reject a disciplined life? Why didn't I listen to my mentors or take my teachers seriously? My life is ruined. And then, as a New Testament scripture, in the book of James, chapter 3, verse 1, and it's directed to Christian teaching. A little bit confusing, but this is what it says. Don't be in any rush to become a teacher, my friends. Teaching is highly responsible work. Teachers are held to the strictest standards. And none of us is perfectly qualified. Haven't we focused on the teachers nowadays and the difficult job a teacher has? So think about that. Thank a teacher you had. Thank someone that's given you a message that's made a difference in your life. Show your appreciation and celebrate. And let's pray today for our teachers and our preachers. Good teaching is vital to a growing Christian following community. And we need committed disciples for Christ. So how are we encouraging this? How is our community listening and responding to good teaching? You see, we have many levels of understanding when we read and when we hear and when we recite scripture. We learn facts. We feel emotions. We are strengthened. We question. And we have growing intelligence of understanding and perceptions. Okay. In our lesson on page 70, Ask us a question that you can think about today. How have you discussed, how have you discerned that good preaching and good teaching have deepened your faith? And it can be one particularly memorable event or it can be over time. I have so many memories of my coming in the Christian faith in my church in my hometown of Aiken and the wonderful preachers that gave us messages to live by and to think about. To wrap up the lesson today, I found several suggestions to us as the people, we are the listeners, to today's sermons. It might be a podcast. It might be a radio message. It might be a song. It might be an encounter. It might be at a Bible study. It might be in a Sunday school class. Whatever you listen and whatever you hear in your daily Christian life and your actions that we perform to strengthen our understanding, we can use the teaching and use the words from Nehemiah that these people listened and wept and then were told to celebrate as a model for our lives. And we can be receptive to God's laws in our lives and actions. So there's six steps to think about when you are getting ready to have a lesson. The first step is to prepare. You need to be ready, responsive, study, read ahead of time, be engaged. The next one, relate. Identify who's speaking and who is listening. Acknowledge the relationships 
in the passage. And think about the characters. The next one. Be sure I'm right. Consider points of view. You might hear some that are different. I remember taking Bible classes in college, and there were different theories that we were exposed to and had to think about and consider and go back to the Bible to study. Think about independent thinking, taking a stand or not, supporting, and cultures that are so different around the world, and yet we're all people of faith. The fourth one is, get it right, participate. When you participate, you are responding, you are attentive, you might sing, you might weep, you might cheer, you might reflect, you might praise. Your participation needs to be active. Okay? Another one, challenge. Challenge yourself, your perspective, open your new ideas. This is how we grow. Challenge, wrestle with your thoughts. And the last one, you pray. Keep your prayers handy and ever-present for wisdom and insight. Ask for wisdom from the Lord and insight to understand clarity. So in this passage in Nehemiah, the people of God are listening to a wise prophet and they continue their mission of service and they rededicate their commitment to God. And what did they receive? They received blessings, they received joy, they received a welcome, and they received a celebration, and they were told to share it. What better way to live and thrive in our community? Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Sunday and be listening so we hear some more good teachable moments. I'm going to pray a short silent prayer and then we'll pray the prayer that was in the end of our lesson in our lesson book. You can pray along with me if you want if you've got your lesson book handy. Let's close. We thank you for the gift of scripture, O oh God. We thank you for the compelling stories, the evocative poetry, the instructions that teach us how to love and live. Help us to understand scripture more deeply, to live it out more faithfully, and to share it more generously. In the name of Jesus, amen.